this activity, you will resize an image quickly and seamlessly. I'll start with the tutorial and then it'll be your turn. We'll discuss shrinking images at the beginning and we'll finish with enlarging some photos. First, open up any image or you can use this one that's attached to this lecture. It's a great looking picture but it's also way too big for my taste. Here's what we're going to do to resize it. First, I'll unlock my layer by double clicking it. In this new window that shows up, you can enter any name, but I like to keep everything as is. Great, now we can start resizing it. Here's the most popular technique. Use Ctrl T to enter free transform mode. Now you'll notice the image has a stroke of sorts as well as some handles. If I go and drag from the top left corner, you can see how the image immediately changes. Trouble is, that's losing its aspect ratio and that's destroying it. To avoid that, I'll press Escape and repeat the process, only this time I'll hold down Shift as I resize it. Now, this is much better, and even though I may try to screw things up by dragging in the wrong place, by holding down Shift, I'm constraining its aspect ratio so I can't mess it up. Sometimes you'll want to eyeball it, but maybe you want to be precise. Well, we have a couple of options. First, focus on the Options bar. In this region, you can see a W and an H. Those stand for width and height, and by default, these values are shown in percentages. If you want to manually type something in, make sure you first click on this chain icon. That's the equivalent of holding down Shift. Once that's done, I can write something like 50% and the height will change as well. But say you don't know what percentage you're looking for. Instead, you need its width to be 1000 pixels. No problem, simply right click in this box and change percent to pixels. Now you can do the same for the other box. Let's take it down to 1000 pixels. I recommend you double click and replace the existing value with your own. Trying to type it in manually is a bit tricky. Please note we're still in free transform mode, so if you try to get another tool, let's say the brush tool, you'll see you'll first be asked if you want to commit to these changes, so unless you press enter or click on this check mark from the options bar, you won't be able to continue with your edits. I'll click apply so I can show you another method of resizing. In case you don't want to use Ctrl T, you can open your properties panel. If you're not sure which one it is, go to window, properties. From it, you gain access to the same width and height boxes, but without entering free transform mode. So I'll drop the size down to 800, and once I press tab or enter, the new size is going to come in. Good stuff. As a side note, X and Y stand for the image's position on the horizontal and vertical axis, starting from the top left. So if you replace the current X value with zero pixels, the image will touch the left edge of our canvas. Increase that to 100 pixels and it will move 100 pixels to the right. Same thing applies for the vertical axis. Zero makes it touch the top edge of our work area. And if I replace that with 200, it will move down. Good stuff. Say you want to export your work so you can share it with your friends. Trouble is, if you save it with alt Control shift w you can see all this excess space all around your photo. That's not good, so how can you easily get rid of it? Well, I'm going to show you the easiest and fastest way to do that. Let's hit Cancel. We'll go to Image, Trim. From this new window, I'll select Transparent Pixels. Once I hit OK, you'll now see all that extra space has gone away. Fantastic. Let me show you another way of shrinking an image. Press F12 to revert back to its original state. OK, now without doing anything else, we'll use Control alt i this will bring up the image size dialog. Here you can see its current dimensions, 3000 by 2000 pixels. Here it's a repeat of what we just talked about. We can put in 50% and this will instantly resize the image to 1500 by 1000. Or we can switch these values to pixels. By default, the chain icon is already pressed. Once you hit OK, you're good to go. Let's talk about enlarging an image, or what's referred to as upsampling. In general, you don't want to do that. It's highly discouraged, even though Photoshop's engine has advanced in recent years. If you want a high-quality image, your best bet is to recapture that photo with a better camera. Since that's usually not a reasonable option, I'll show you the best way to do it even though you won't get crystal clear results. I'll use Control alt i But if you don't want to use that hotkey, you can go to Image, Image Size. 
Here you can see this has been taken down to 750 by 500 pixels, so it's not tiny, but it's also not high quality. That's my first piece of advice. Try and enlarge images that are at least medium in size. If you're planning on blowing up something that's 400 by 300 pixels, you're not going to have a good result. Here I'll crank it up to 300% so I can explain what's going on. I'll also enlarge this window so you can see more of this preview. 300% is an exaggerated value. I wouldn't recommend you go this high because this command means that for each existing pixel, Photoshop has to create three additional ones. Now let's play around with these options, though my advice is to leave it set at automatic. Photoshop usually does a good job by itself. In case your preview shows you something isn't right, you can go through these other options. You'll see no difference between automatic and preserve details because that's the new default value that Photoshop uses for enlarging images. If we switch to bicubic smoother, the image becomes blurry. I don't think this is a viable option. The only real change you may want to make in your day-to-day -day work is this. Switch to Preserve Details and you can use this Reduce Noise slider to tone down all the harshness in the sky. If I bring it all the way up to 100%, you can see the difference. That's the easiest way of enlarging an image. You can also use Ctrl T and I'll show you how that's done later in this course, but this is simple and effective. And that wraps up our lecture. Now it's your turn to test out these methods with a fresh new image of your own. Try out these steps we just practiced on your own and see which one you like best. Is it the free transform method or do you prefer the image size command of Control alt i Let me know in the comments section. I'll see you soon.